What's up everybody, blessed be, my name is Manon and you are watching Witch in the Working where we will be discussing all things witchy in and around, throughout and about, above, below and beyond. Please visit me on my other platforms as well including Facebook, Instagram and Patreon, all links down in the description below. The full script to this video and most of the others is available on my Patreon account for download if desired to build your Witch in the Working book of shadows. So here we are once again for another episode of Witch in the Working, going through a lot of changes right now as Pink Cubert and I are finally getting out of this apartment and into a townhouse. Still not moving into our forever home as the townhouse is a rental as well, but at least a step closer and definitely a lot better than putting up with this place. The apartment isn't so bad itself, it's it's the surrounding environment if you can you know read between the lines. Um, that we're not so happy with. Neighbors and the establishment itself are definitely just not up to our liking, you know, not up to, to par, shall we say. <laughs> and it will be great to just have more privacy as well as circle room area once again, which translates to me running a coven again, which I'm super excited about. So as we all know, there's a ton of different magical systems that float around the universe nowadays. Traditional witchcraft, eclectic witchcraft, Wicca, Druidism, heathenism, hoodoo, voodoo, Santeria, the dozens of reconstructionist systems, etc., etc. Um, one system is quite dominant and in fact prevalent and incorporated into a lot of other systems and people don't even realize it. The system is shamanism. In this episode of Witch in the Working, we're going to talk all about shamanism and its impact on today's magical systems. So without further ado, roll the intro. Welcome back everyone. Shamanism, often shrouded in mystery and sometimes a victim of uh, misinterpretation, represents one of humanity's earliest spiritual practices. Its roots delve deeply into our past, spanning the globe and linking cultures in a mutual recognition of the spiritual dimensions of existence. However, many misconceptions about shamanism persist. This video aims to unveil these misconceptions and provide a thorough introduction to this ancient practice in connection with other spiritual traditions like witchcraft and paganism. Shamanism traces its origins back tens of thousands of years, finding its footing among ancient peoples across Asia, Africa, the Americas, and Europe. At its core, shamanism isn't a religion, but rather a method, a set of techniques used to interact with the spirit world and the unseen realities. Despite the cultural variations of shamanism, its essence, the belief in a world animated by spirits and unseen entities, remains constant. Misconceptions about shamanism are plentiful, due in large part to its depiction in pop culture and the misunderstandings born from its diverse cultural expressions. One common misconception is that all shamans are alike, but shamanic practices can vary enormously between different cultures, much like the languages we speak. Shamanism is not a standardized practice or belief system, but rather it encompasses a wide array of beliefs and rituals, each deeply ingrained in its cultural context. Moreover, shamanism is not evil, dangerous, or primitive. It is a profound and respected spiritual path that seeks balance in the natural world and healing for its practitioners. Understanding the connection between shamanism, witchcraft, and paganism helps uncover the broader world of spirituality. Witchcraft and paganism are spiritual traditions that share many concepts with shamanism, such as the belief in a magical world, the respect for nature, and the practice of ritual. However, they also have significant differences. While shamanism focuses on the interaction with the spirit world through journeying and trance, witchcraft typically involves spell work and rites to manifest change. Though I must mention, I myself and many others incorporate shamanistic practices into our craft practice. While witchcraft and shamanism share common threads, they each bring unique perspectives to spiritual practice. A person might identify as a witch, a pagan, or a shaman, but they may also weave these paths together in a way that is meaningful and enriching for them. Recognizing the overlapping elements as well as the distinct features of each can provide for a better understanding of our spiritual potential. As we start learning about shamanism, our aim isn't to make it too simple or take it over, but to better understand it and see how it fits into the bigger picture of spirituality throughout human history. 
We're about to dive into an exciting unseen world where spirits, people, and nature all connect in a beautiful way. Shamanism is all about special beliefs and ways of understanding the world that go beyond just seeing things as they are. Shamans, who are often seen as links between the real world and the spiritual one, journey into these spiritual spaces to learn, heal, and create balance. Let's dive into the main ideas of shamanism, looking at beliefs about spirits, ideas about health and sickness, views on death and life after death, and how all of these compare to other spiritual ways like witchcraft. Shamanism is grounded in the understanding that the visible world is pervaded by invisible forces or spirits that affect the lives of the living. A core belief in shamanism is the existence of the spirit or soul, a spirit essence that survives the death of the physical body. Shamans believe in a cosmos composed of several interconnected layers or worlds, often split into the lower world, the middle world, our physical reality, and the upper world. They journey through these worlds to gain wisdom, seek healing, or commune with spirits. The spirit world is not a vague, distant place in shamanic traditions, but an integral part of reality. Shamans consider all natural objects and phenomena as imbued with spirit or life force, following the philosophy of animism. This includes animals, plants, stones, and elements like water and wind, each possessing its unique spirit. Communing with these spirits is central to the shaman's role, and they serve as guides, teachers, or sources of healing during the shamanic journeys. Shamanism perceives health and illness not merely in physical terms, but as states of harmony or disharmony within the person in their relationship with the spirit world. Illness may be seen as a loss of power or soul, intrusion of a harmful spirit, or the result of breaking a taboo. Shamans act as intermediaries, restoring balance and health by journeying to the spirit world to retrieve lost soul parts, remove harmful intrusions, or uncover spiritual insights. The perception of death in shamanism is not the end, but a transition into a different state of existence. The spirit or soul, believed to be eternal, continues its journey in the spirit world. Some shamanic cultures believe in reincarnation, where the soul returns to the physical world in a new form. The shaman often aids in this transition, ensuring the departed soul's safe passage to the spirit world. While sharing similarities with shamanism, like their respect for nature and belief in an animated world, witchcraft and paganism offer distinct viewpoints. So what do I mean by this animated world? The phrase animated world is typically used to describe a worldview where all things, including objects and natural phenomena that people might not think of as alive, are imbued with life, spirit, or consciousness. This perspective is common in many um, indigenous and animistic traditions, including shamanism. For instance, a shaman might perform a ritual in a forest, treating every part of the environment as living and sacred. They communicate not just with visible creatures like animals and plants, but also with spirits of the earth, water, air, and fire. They may even interact with the spirits of things we usually consider inanimate, like rocks or mountains. For shamans, the world is animated with the consciousness of these spirits. We as witches work with spirits all the time um, in our practices, uh, especially um, when we're talking about the spirits of earth, air, fire, and water. Um, not all of us, but I personally work with those spirits all the time. Um, I believe a lot of us actually incorporate shamanistic practices, what are considered shamanistic practices, into our current day practices and don't even realize it. In witchcraft, the manipulation of energy or magic is central using spells and rituals to create change. In contrast, shamanism's focus lies heavily on personal spirit journeying and direct interaction with the spirit world. It's less about worshiping deities and more about forging a working relationship with the spirits. However, all these paths acknowledge the sacredness of nature and the existence of unseen realms, making them complementary and sometimes interwoven spiritual practices. Shamanic practices are more than simple rituals. They are purposeful journeys into the spiritual realms, bridging the seen and the unseen, the physical and the metaphysical. These practices serve as a conduit for communication, healing, guidance, and transformation. The shaman plays a crucial role as an intermediary between the human community and the spirit world. Equipped with knowledge and skills passed down through generations, shamans perform several functions including healing the sick, guiding departed souls, divining the future, and maintaining balance balance between the physical and spiritual realms. At the heart of the shamanic practice lies the shamanic journey, a conscious voyage into the spirit world. 
Shamans enter altered states of consciousness often through rhythmic drumming or other sound techniques to journey into the upper, middle, or lower worlds. During these journeys, they commune with spirit guides, seek wisdom, or retrieve lost soul parts to promote healing and a balance. One of the fundamental practices in shamanism is soul retrieval. Shamans believe that traumatic experiences can result in the fragmentation of the soul, with pieces becoming lost or stuck in the spirit world. This soul loss can lead to various physical, emotional, or spiritual imbalances. The shaman journeys into the spirit world to find and return these lost soul parts, restoring the individual's wholeness and well-being. Shamans use various divination techniques to glean insights into the future, make decisions, or diagnose illness. These methods can include reading signs in nature, um, casting bones or stones, interpreting dreams, or direct revelation during shamanic journeys. The aim is to gain guidance from the spirit guide, providing clear clarity and direction for individuals or the community. Ancestral reverence is a core shamanic practice. Ancestors are seen not only as biological predecessors, but also as spiritual allies. Shamans often communicate with ancestral spirits for guidance, healing, or to honor their memory. This bond between the living and those who've passed away helps keep a feeling of ongoing connection, respect, and help between both sides, even after death. Shamanic healing takes many forms, from the physical to the spiritual. It could involve the use of medicinal plants, energetic healing, extra of harmful spirits, or the aforementioned soul retrieval we talked about earlier. Many shamans view illness as a spiritual imbalance, and healing involves not only addressing physical symptoms, but restoring spiritual harmony as well. Healing rituals often incorporate dance, music, and the creation of sacred space. Getting to know shamanic practices helps us understand the deep knowledge in this spiritual way of life. These practices, which have come from thousands of years of people interacting with nature in the spiritual world, give us a special way to think about healing, learning, and our role in the universe. In shamanic practice, tools are not merely physical objects, but allies in the shaman's spiritual work. Each instrument carries a specific function, facilitating connection with spirit world, healing, divination, and a transformation of energy. Let's go ahead and take a look at these key tools used in some shamanistic practices. The drum, often called the shaman's horse, is a crucial tool for inducing altered states of consciousness and uh, facilitating shamanic journeys. Many of us have been to a drumming circle or two, I'm sure of it. You know that feeling of total relaxation and almost trance-like um, induction you start to achieve as the night moves forward? The repetitive rhythm of drumming can lead the shaman into a trance, allowing them to access the spirit world. Similarly, rattles are used for their rhythmic sound, often employed in healing ceremonies or to clear negative energy from a space. Power objects, also known as fetishes, charms, or talismans, are personal spiritual objects that hold significant meaning for the shaman. They might be gifts from spirits, representations of spirit guides, or items charged with a specific purpose. These objects are believed to carry a certain power or energy that can aid the shaman in their work. Plants play a vital role in shamanism, both as physical and spiritual allies. Many shamans work with plant spirits, or the spiritual essence of plants, for healing and wisdom. In addition, some herbs like sage, cedar, or sweetgrass are commonly used in smudging ceremonies for cleansing and purifying spaces. In some traditions, psychoactive plants are used as um, entheogens to facilitate deep spiritual experience, always with great respect and care though. Animals are deeply respected in shamanism, viewed as teachers, guides, and allies. Each animal is believed to embody specific qualities or energies that a shaman can call upon or learn from. For example, a bear might symbolize strength and introspection, while an eagle might represent vision and spiritual connection. Animal totems or spirit animals often assist shamans during their journeys in the spirit world. For more information about um, journeying with animals and working with animals uh, in that sense, see my video here and I'll also link it down in the description below. The tools of shamanism are as diverse and varied as the cultures they spring from, each carrying a particular purpose and spiritual significance. They're not merely physical items, but conduits of spiritual power, extensions of the shaman's intent, and bridges between worlds. Shamanism as a spiritual practice spans the globe, embodying a rich diversity of cultures and traditions. 
From the frozen expanses of Siberia to the tropical rainforests of the Amazon, from the plains of Africa to the mountains of North America, shamanism permeates the spiritual history of humanity. Siberia is often considered the cradle of shamanism, with the very term shaman deriving from the Tungus people of Siberia. Here, shamans, dressed in elaborate costumes adorned with representations of their spirit helpers, act as mediators with the spirit world. They utilize drumming and rhythmic chanting to enter trance states, journeying into spirit spiritual realms for healing and divination. In North America, native cultures have a long tradition of shamanic practice, although the names and specific rituals vary among tribes. Medicine men or women often serve uh, shamanic roles, healing the sick, interpreting dreams, and performing ceremonies to ensure successful hunts or harvest. The sacred use of tobacco, animal guides, and the vision quest, a solitary spiritual journey, are all key elements of Native American shamanic practice. In the Amazon rainforest, shamanism intertwines with the rich biodiversity of the region. Ayahuasca shamanism is well known where shamans guide participants through transformative spiritual journeys facilitated by the ayahuasca brew. These shamans, often referred to as ayahuasqueros or vegetalistas, work closely with plant spirits for healing and spiritual growth. In Africa, shamanic traditions are diverse and widespread. Among the Zulu people of South Africa, the Sangoma serve as a shamanic role utilizing divination, herbal medicine, and spirit possession for healing and community guidance. In other parts of Africa, such as among the Dagara people of Burkina Faso, shamans uh, perform rituals and ceremonies to maintain harmony between the human community, the natural world, and the ancestral spirits. In Australian Aboriginal cultures, individuals known as clever men or clever women perform shaman-like roles healing the sick, controlling weather elements, and communicating with ancestral spirits. Further in the Pacific, Hawaiian shamanism, or Huna, is a system of practices and beliefs that include healing, divination, and mediation with uh, the spirit world. As we explore shamanism worldwide, we see many different ways it's practiced, each one closely linked to its own culture. But despite these differences, they all share some things they recognize that all life is connected. They respect the spirit world and they see the shaman as a link between these areas. This in fact shows a shared human desire to connect spiritually and live in balance with nature. Today, there is a resurgence of interest in shamanism beyond its indigenous roots. Contemporary shamanism, sometimes referred to as neo-shamanism, draws upon various traditions, synthesizing them into a form accessible to people irrespective of their cultural background. However, this trend also calls for a mindful approach to avoid cultural appropriation and to maintain respect for the indigenous origins of shamanic practices. The modern resurgence of shamanism is inextricably linked to the rise of the New Age movement in the 1960s and 70s, which saw a growing interest in alternative spirituality holistic health, and ecological consciousness. During this period, anthropologists and spiritual seekers began to study and participate in indigenous shamanic practices, bringing these traditions to broader awareness. One notable figure is anthropologist Michael Harner, who introduced the concept of core shamanism. Harner's approach distilled common elements across various shamanic traditions into a system that could be practiced irrespective of one's cultural background, making shamanism more accessible to a wider audience. Today's shamanism, often referred to as neo-shamanism, is characterized by a fusion of practices drawn from diverse cultures adapted to contemporary life. Modern shamans offer services such as soul retrievals, spiritual journeying, and energy healing, often integrating these practices with disciplines like psychotherapy, holistic health, and personal coaching. Shamanic teachings and workshops have also gained popularity, teaching techniques like drumming, journeying, and connecting with spirit guides. These teachings are often focused on self-empowerment and personal spiritual experience. The modern revival of shamanism offers several benefits. For many, it provides a path for personal spiritual exploration that is not tied to dogmatic religious systems. It also emphasizes a direct experiential connection with the spiritual realm, fostering personal growth, self-healing, and a deeper understanding of one's purpose. Shamanism also teaches a strong respect for nature and the importance of taking care of our environment, which is very important considering some of the environmental problems we face today. While the revival of shamanism has many positive aspects, it's not without its challenges. Key amongst these is the risk of cultural appropriation. I'm sure you've all heard that word running around from time to time nowadays, only sometimes I think people nowadays take it to the extreme, um, and I don't agree with a lot of it. But 
in certain situations like this, I kind of do agree with it. Cultural appropriation is the borrowing and misuse of rituals and practices outside of their cultural context, often without proper understanding or respect. It's crucial that modern practitioners approach shamanism with cultural sensitivity, acknowledging its indigenous roots and giving due credit. Additionally, as shamanism grows in popularity, there is the risk of commercialization where sacred practices are commodified, potentially diluting their depth and their significance. The return of interest in shamanism today is complicated, showing people's desires for a deeper spiritual bond and balance with nature. As we explore this, it's important to treat these old traditions with respect and honesty, recognizing their history while seeing how they fit into our world today. The modern revival of shamanism has led to a growing interest in incorporating shamanic practices into daily life. However, it's essential to do so with respect for the cultural origins of these practices. Mindfulness of the potential for, um, again, cultural appropriate appropriation and an understanding of the importance of personal authenticity. Let's take a look at how to ethically and respectfully engage with shamanism. Educate yourself. The first step to respectfully incorporating the shamanic practices is education. Understanding the historical, cultural, and spiritual context of these practices is crucial. Learn about the indigenous cultures where these practices originate and the beliefs that underpin them and the role they play within those communities. Resources might include academic texts, documentaries, and first-hand accounts from indigenous practitioners. It's vital to respect the cultural context in which shamanic practices occur. While it's okay to draw inspiration from these practices, it's not appropriate to extract them from their cultural context and claim them as your own or commercialize them. Remember that many of these practices are sacred rituals to the communities they come from. Approach shamanic practices with an attitude of humility and reverence. These are deeply spiritual practices that require sincere respect. Avoid rushing into experiences or seeking quick fixes. Instead, adopt an attitude of patience, open-mindedness, and willingness to learn and grow. When learning about shamanic practices, seek out genuine respected teachers. This might include indigenous practitioners who are willing to share their traditions or non-indigenous teachers who have received permission to teach these practices and do so with respect and integrity. When incorporating shamanic practices, it's essential to maintain your personal authenticity. Shamanism is about developing a personal connection with the spiritual world. It's not about copying another culture or trying to become something you're not. Instead, look for ways to integrate shamanic principles into your own cultural and personal context. Finally, if you benefit from shamanic practices, look for ways to give back. This might involve supporting indigenous communities, whether through direct donations, supporting indigenous artists and businesses, or advocating for indigenous rights. It's a way of showing gratitude and acknowledging the source of these practices. Adding shamanic practices to your life can really change you, but it's important to do it in a way that respects where these practices come from. If we approach shamanism with respect, humbleness, and thankfulness, we can use these old spiritual ways to help us grow, heal, and connect more with the spiritual world. As spiritual seekers, we often find ourselves drawn to aspects of different paths, feeling a pull towards a hybrid approach that truly resonates with our unique spiritual needs and perspectives. For those interested in shamanism and witchcraft, combining practices from these paths can create a vibrant and deeply personal spiritual tradition. Let's explore how elements of shamanism and witchcraft might uh, intertwine, yielding a harmonious blend of these two rich traditions. Before venturing into the combination of shamanic and witchcraft practices, it's crucial to approach each tradition with respect and understanding. Each represents a complex and profound spiritual path with its own set of beliefs, practices, and cultural context. Engaging with these traditions should be done with reverence, recognizing their origins and significance. Shamanism and witchcraft share core principles that can serve as a bridge between the two paths. Reverence for nature, belief in an unseen world of spirits or deities, and the use of ritual and magic are um, commonalities that provide a solid foundation for merging practices. So here is some ways that you can create a combined practice. One is ritual structure. Witchcraft provides a structured ritual format that includes casting a circle, invoking elements, and calling on deities. This can provide a helpful framework for rituals. Within this structure, you can incorporate shamanic techniques like journeying or trance work, creating a powerful fusion of practices. Number two, deities and spirits. 
In witchcraft, the goddess and the god are often honored. Shamanism, on the other hand, involves interactions with a broad range of spirit entities. A combined practice might involve honoring the goddess and the god as primary deities, while also recognizing and working with ancestral spirits, animal spirits, or land spirits in line with shamanic traditions. I do that in my circles all the time and have my entire career as a witch. So it's kind of interesting how they, they just naturally meld together. Number three, healing practices. Both witchcraft and shamanism offer robust healing practices. Combining these could lead to a potent healing practice that utilizes the best of both worlds. The energy work and herbal knowledge of witchcraft along with the soul retrieval and extraction practices of shamanism. Number four, celebrating the natural cycle. Witchcraft's Wheel of the Year with its eight Sabbaths provides a beautiful way to honor the cycle of nature. These celebrations can be enriched with shamanic practice such as drumming or trance dance to connect with the spirits of the seasons or elements. Number five, divination. Witchcraft and shamanism both utilize divination, but often in different forms. Incorporating a variety of divination techniques from both paths can offer more diverse insights. This could include using tarot or runes from the witchcraft tradition, alongside shamanic practices such as journeying for insight or interpreting messages from nature. Again, something I do all the time and always have. Um, all of those path workings that you guys have seen that I've created throughout many of these videos all part of a shamanistic type practice. Remember, the journey of combining spiritual practices is deeply personal and unique. It's about creating a path that resonates with your spiritual needs and values. As long as it's done with respect and understanding for the traditions you're drawing from, combining shamanic and witchcraft or Wiccan practices can lead to a rich, fulfilling spiritual path that bridges the wisdom of the ancients with the needs of the modern world. As we finish learning about shamanism, we think about its ageless wisdom, different ways it's practiced, its return in modern times, and how to respectfully use its practices. More and more people are interested in shamanism today, showing a shared desire for deeper spiritual experiences, healing, and a stronger connection with nature and the universe. Shamanism in its myriad forms offers a wealth of spiritual tools and practices. From journeys to the spirit world to developing relationships with spirit guides, from healing rituals to communal ceremonies, these practices offer pathways to personal transformation and a greater understanding of the interconnectedness of all life. The modern revival of shamanism while exciting also presents challenges. The potential for cultural appropriation and commercialization looms large, threatening to undermine the authenticity and cultural richness of these ancient traditions. However, these challenges also present opportunities for dialogue, education, and the development of a more conscious and respectful approach to shamanism. To incorporate shamanic practices into one's life, one must do so with respect, humility, and genuine desire to learn. This involves educating oneself about the cultural origins of these practices, respecting their cultural context, seeking authentic teachers, maintaining personal authenticity, and giving back to the indigenous communities. In essence, the respectful engagement with shamanism involves recognizing and honoring its roots, understanding its significance, and upholding its integrity as we adapt it to our individual and societal contexts. This respectful approach not only ensures the ethical adoption of shamanic practices, but also enriches our personal spiritual journeys, fostering a deeper, more authentic connection with ourselves, um, others, and the world around us. Looking ahead, shamanism has a lot to offer. It encourages us to build a stronger bond with nature, heal our own and shared hurts, and dig deep into our spiritual side. If we approach shamanism with respect and honesty, together we can bring about a spiritual awakening. This will honor our ancestors' wisdom, value our world's diverse cultures, and work towards a future where spirituality, respect for nature, and togetherness define us. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Witch in the Working. Do you practice any form of shamanism? Do you incorporate shamanism in your witchcraft practice? Let us all know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to ring that little bell to be reminded of the wonderful and exciting future episodes to come. I love you guys and gals. Blessed be.